Praise God. Say, I'm an eternal light. <laughs> You're no longer a humanite. I'm an eternal light. <laughs> Glory. First John chapter 5, verse 6, would you read it with me? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. And these three are one. And there are there three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one. So we are talking about the anointing, the Christ. So the Christ comes into the world, right? So if the Christ came into the world, who else came into the world? The Father, the Spirit. They all understand that. So that's why Jesus could only, he, he was the one that said, if you see me, you see the Father. Because he was the Spirit of the Almighty. Somebody got it. God took a part of himself out of his bosom and sent forth, called himself Son, to come into the world from a timeless place to a place bound by time into the natural realm. He came to bring the anointing to set the captives free from the bondage of time. He came to bring the anointing that carries the presence the power and the truth. He came to bring the anointing. Does everybody understand that? Yes, salvation is wonderful. But what good is salvation without the anointing? Hello. Salvation is just the beginning. People are all happy they're saved. Whippy. That's good. I'm glad you're saved. Are you anointed? Are you born again? You know, there's a difference between saved and born again, and I'm not going there right now. He was in Christ as a new creation. Old things have passed away. That's born again. Hello? Now you must maintain that status of born again state of being. See, there's three chambers in the tabernacle. And there's an area. And you can look at your sheet. Everybody has sheets there, right? You can see where the eternal... The Christ enters into the universe of time and space. You can see where he, he baptized in the Holy Spirit. See, on the cross is where he leased his spirit, the spirit of Christ for me and you. And the spirit of Christ was released at a certain feast because all the seven feasts of the Lord are so important and specific. The, you can look at the bottom. It says the feast of the Lord. There's Passover, Unleavened, First Fruits, Pentecost. So Jesus had to go through the chambers. He had to fill each chamber of the tabernacle. Does everybody understand that? So that he could release his spirit, known as the spirit of Christ for me and you. And he did that on the Feast of Pentecost. So we see here that the anointing is the eternal presence and the power and the truth, right? On the cross, he made the exchange. He took your presence for his. Do you understand that? The truth. I mean, uh, the next one is the power. Now, you may think, well, why isn't it along with the truth? Because the power, he descended to hell and overcomes with the power. Without the power of God, you can't overcome. And he raises from the dead. And the truth is that when the presence and the power are there, truth is always expressed. So everybody got it. Truth is what? Always expressed. It's always manifested. That's why truth sets you free. Yes. Because it's the eternal presence of God. It's the anointing. Turn to 1 John chapter 2. I have a lot more, but I'm going to go to just these couple scriptures here and we're done. 1 John chapter 2. Is everybody there? Is everybody okay? Oh, glory. <clears throat> in verse 9, uh, no. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 18. Is everybody there? Little children is the what? 
last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, and even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know it is the last hour. So, now that we know what Christ is, what's Antichrist? Comes against the presence, power, and the truth. Hello. So everybody, everybody got it. Now, there are sweet people who are bound by the spirit of Antichrist and don't even know it. They're bound by tradition. They've got, let me tell you, the spirit of Antichrist always puts limitations. The spirit of Antichrist is not Satan. Are you listening? He is a spirit. Now, the spirit dwells in just about everything because it's coming against the anointing. See, the demons hate the anointing because they acknowledge the anointing. When Jesus got off the boat, walked on the land, all the demons freaked out. Oh, here's the Christ. The Son of the Most High God. It is in our time. They freaked out. Why? Because they saw the anointing. See, the demons see the anointing in you, but they also know what you think. So even though they see the anointing in you, they look at you going, uh-oh. Ooh, they don't even know they're anointed. <laughs> then they torment you. And they torment you in the mind, and they convince you. Yeah, that's what we got. Does everybody understand this? See, because they know. It's amazing how many people are telling people the devils can't read your mind. Baloney, they can't read your mind. They're a spirit, and so are you. If you've ever stood before an angel, he knows exactly what you're thinking. You don't have to say a word before you can even say it. He's already answered you. Hello? Is everybody okay? The little children is the last hour. There are many antichrists. Even now many antichrists have come by which we know it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been with us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be manifest that none of them were of us. But you have a what? An anointing from the Holy One, and you know what? All things, if you're listening, if you're cooperating, if you're obeying. Has everybody got it? I have not written to you because you don't know the truth, but because you know the truth. And that no lie is of the truth. I have two words for you. Stop it. Who is a liar? But he who denies Jesus is the what? Anointed one in his anointing. He is the Christ. He is an antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father. Therefore let that abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also abide in the Son and the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. So the life of God is in the anointing. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you, manipulate you, mislead you. Bind you with traditions. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie, and just that it has taught you, you will abide in him. And I love it because he calls him an anointing, the anointing him. Does anybody understand this? Oh, I got a lot more. Let's close at one scripture, okay? Mark 16. Glory. Mark 16. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It's a new season. It's a new day. Fresh anointing. Yeah. It's flowing my way. It's a season of power. Yes. And prosperity. It's a new season. And it's called for you and me. Come on, I'm not going to leave you out of it now. We share. Her. Mark 16. Come on, let's all read it together. Verse 6. Uh, so let me see here. 16. 